and mathematically that's called a line integral. Okay, so physically, remember the work done by a force is the force times the distance, and more precisely, it's actually the dot product between the force as a vector and the displacement vector for a small motion. So say that you know your point is moving from here to here, you have the displacement delta r, that's just the change in the position vector. Okay, that's the vector from the old position to the new position. And then you have your force that's being exerted and you do the dot product between them. And that will give you the work of the force during this motion. And the physical significance of this, well, the work tells you basically how much energy you have to provide to actually perform this motion. Okay, just in case you haven't seen this in 801 yet. I'm hoping all of you have heard about work somewhere. But in case it's completely mysterious, that's the amount of energy you have to provide. Sorry, actually, no, that's the amount of energy provided by the force. Sorry. Right, so if the force goes along the motion, it actually pushes the particle. It provides energy to it to do that motion. And conversely, if you're trying to go against the force, then you have to provide energy to the particle to be able to do that. So in particular, the work, you know, if this is the only force that's taking place, then the work will be the variation in kinetic energy of the particle along the motion. So now that's a good description for a small motion, but let's say that my particle is not just doing that, but you know, it's doing you know, something complicated and my force keeps changing. So somehow maybe you know, I have a different force at every point. So then I want to find the total work done along the motion. Well, what I have to do is I have to cut my trajectory into these little pieces, you know, and for each of them I have a vector along the trajectory. I have the force, I do the dot product and I sum them together. And of course, the actual answer, well, to get the actual answer, I should actually cut into smaller and smaller pieces and sum all of the small contributions to work. So in fact, it's going to be an integral. Okay, so along some trajectory, let's call C the trajectory for curve, you know, it's some curve. And here, um, the work adds up to an integral which, well, we write this using the notation integral along C of f dot dl. Okay, so we have to decode this notation. So one way to decode this is to say it's a limit as we cut into smaller and smaller pieces of the sum over each piece of the trajectory of the force at the given point dot product with that small vector along the trajectory. And, well, that's not how we're going to compute it. You know, to compute it, we do things differently. So how can we actually compute it? Well, what we can do is say that actually we are cutting things into, you know, small time intervals. So the way that we split our trajectory is we just take, you know, a, a picture every, say, millisecond. So every millisecond, we have a new position and the motion, you know, the amount by which you have moved during each small time interval is basically the velocity vector times the amount of time. So, in fact, let me just rewrite this as, you know, you do the dot product between the force and how much you have moved 
well, if I just rewrite it this way, nothing's happened, but what this thing is actually is the velocity vector. dr dt. So what I'm trying to say is that I can actually compute my integral by integrating f dot product with dr dt over time from time you know whatever the initial time to whatever the final time is I integrate f dot product velocity dt and of course I mean here when I say f I mean f at the point on the trajectory at time t right this guy depends on x and y therefore it depends on t okay I see a lot of confused faces so let's do an example and then I will ask you oh okay So now, yes, that would be probably, um, yeah, so here I need to put a limit as delta t tends to zero. I cut my trajectory into smaller and smaller time intervals. For each time interval, I have a small motion, which is essentially velocity times delta t, and then I dot that with a force, and I sum them. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say that we do we want to find the work of this force. So I guess that's the last example that we had. Okay, so it's a force field that tries to make everything you know, rotate somehow. Your force points along these circles. And let's say that our trajectory, our particle is moving along the parametric curve. X equals t, y equals t squared for t going from 0 to 1. Okay, so what that looks like, well, maybe I should draw a new picture. So our vector field oh well, whatever. And our trajectory, if you try to plot this, when you see y is actually x squared, so it's a piece of parabola that goes from the origin to 1, 1. That's what our curve looks like. Okay, so we're trying to find the work done by our force along this trajectory. I should point out, I mean, you know, if you're asking me, how did you get this? That's actually the wrong question. I didn't, you know, this is all part of the data. I have a force and I have a trajectory and I want to find what's the work done along that trajectory. These two guys I can choose completely independently of each other. Okay. So, the integral along C of f dot dr will be, well, it's the integral from time zero to time one of f dot the velocity vector dr dt and dt 